This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kristin Luoma, GreenKRI.com. Aesop's Fables The Ass and His Shadow A certain man hired an ass for a journey in summertime, and started out with the owner following behind to drive the beast. By and by, in the heat of the day, they stopped to rest, and the traveller wanted to lie down in the ass's shadow. But the owner, who himself wished to be out of the sun, wouldn't let him do that for he had hired the ass only, and not his shadow. The other maintained that his bargain secured him complete control of the ass for the time being. From words they came to blows, and while they were belaboring each other the ass took to his heels and was soon out of sight. End of The Ass and His Shadow of Aesop's Fables This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Duncan, also known as Nerdvana, in Thononasassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Farmer and His Sons A Farmer being at death's door, and desiring to impart to his sons a secret of much moment, called them around him and said, My sons, I am shortly about to die. I would have you know, therefore, that in my vineyard there lies a hidden treasure. Dig, and you will find it. As soon as their father was dead, the sons took spade and fork and turned up the soil of the vineyard over and over again in their search for the treasure which they supposed to lie buried there. They found none, however, but the vines, after so thorough a digging, produced a crop such as had never before been seen. End of The Farmer and His Sons this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanonasasa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Dog and the Cook A rich man once invited a number of his friends and acquaintances to a banquet. His dog thought it would be a good opportunity to invite another dog, a friend of his. So he went to him and said, My master is giving a feast. There'll be a fine spread, so come and dine with me tonight. The dog, thus invited, came, and when he saw the preparations being made in the kitchen, he said to himself, My word, I'm in luck. I'll take care to eat enough tonight to last me two or three days. At the same time he wagged his tail briskly, by way of showing his friend how delighted he was to have been asked. But just then the cook caught sight of him, and in his annoyance at seeing a strange dog in the kitchen, caught him up by the hind legs and threw him out of the window. He had a nasty fall, and limped away as quickly as he could, howling dismally. Presently some other dogs met him, and said, Well, what sort of dinner did you get? to which he replied, I had a splendid time. The wine was so good, and I drank so much of it, that I really don't remember how I got out of the house. Be shy of favors bestowed at the expense of others. End of the Dog and the Cook This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gazino. Aesop's Fables The Monkey as King 
At a gathering of all the animals, the monkey danced and delighted them so much that they made him their king. The fox, however, was very much disgusted at the promotion of the monkey. So, having one day found a trap with a piece of meat in it, he took the monkey there and said to him, "'Here is a dainty morsel I have found, sire. I did not take it myself, because I thought it ought to be reserved for you, our king. Will you be pleased to accept it?' The monkey made at once for the meat and got caught in the trap. Then he bitterly reproached the fox for leading him into danger, but the fox only laughed and said, "'O oh, monkey, you call yourself king of the beasts, and haven't more sense than to be taken in like that!' End of The Monkey as King This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Thieves and the Cock Some thieves broke into a house, and found nothing worth taking except a cock, which they seized and carried off with them. When they were preparing their supper, one of them caught up the cock and was about to wring his neck, when he cried out for mercy and said, Pray do not kill me. You will find me a most useful bird, for I rouse honest men to their work in the morning by my crowing. But the thief replied with some heat, Yes, I know you do, making it still harder for us to get a livelihood. Into the pot you go. End of the Thieves in the Cock This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Farmer and Fortune A farmer was ploughing one day on his farm, when he turned up a pot of golden coins with his plough. He was overjoyed at his discovery, and from that time forth made an offering daily at the shrine of the goddess of the earth. Fortune was displeased at this, and came to him and said, My man, why do you give earth the credit for the gift which I bestowed upon you? You never thought of thanking me for your good luck. But should you be unlucky enough to lose what you have gained, I know very well that I, Fortune, should then come in for all the blame. Show gratitude where gratitude is due. End of The Farmer and Fortune This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gazino. Aesop's Fables Jupiter and the Monkey Jupiter issued a proclamation to all the beasts and offered a prize to the one who, in his judgment, produced the most beautiful offspring. Among the rest came the monkey, carrying a baby monkey in her arms, a hairless, flat-nosed little fright. When they saw it, the gods all burst into peal on peal of laughter, but the monkey hugged her little one to her and said, "'Jupiter may give the prize to whomsoever he likes.' but I shall always think my baby the most beautiful of them all. End of Jupiter and the Monkey This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Duncan, also known as Nerdvana, and his son Andrew, in Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables Father and Sons A certain man had several sons who were always quarreling with one another, and try as he might, he could not get them to live together in harmony. 
so he determined to convince them of their folly by the following means. Bingham fetched the bundle of sticks. He invited each in turn to break it across his knee. All tried and all failed. And then he undid the bundle and handed them the sticks one by one when they had no difficulty at all in breaking them. There, my boys, said he. United, you will be more than a match for your enemies. But if you quarrel and separate, your weakness will put you at the mercy of those who attack you. Union is strength. End of Father and Sons This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marla Diane Forbidden Dragon dot blogspot dot com Aesop's Fables The Lamp A lamp well filled with oil burned with a clear and steady light and began to swell with pride and boast that it shone more brightly than the sun himself. Just then a puff of wind came and blew it out. Someone struck a match and lit it again and said you just keep a light, and never mind the sun. Why, even the stars never need to be relit as you had to be just now. End of The Lamp This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber, St. John's, Newfoundland. Aesop's Fables, The Owl and the Birds The owl is a very wise bird, and once, long ago, when the first oak sprouted in the forest, she called all the other birds together and said to them, You see this tiny tree? If you take my advice, you will destroy it now when it is small, for when it grows big, the mistletoe will appear upon it, from which bird lime will be prepared for your destruction. Again, when the first flax was sown, she said to them, Go and eat up that seed, for it is the seed of the flax, out of which men will one day make nets to catch you. Once more, when she saw the first archer, she warned the birds that he was their deadly enemy, who would wing his arrows with their own feathers and shoot them. But they took no notice of what she said. In fact, they thought she was rather mad, and laughed at her. When, however, everything turned out as she had foretold, they changed their minds and conceived a great respect for her wisdom. Hence, whenever she appears, the birds attend upon her in the hope of hearing something that may be for their good. She, however, gives them advice no longer, but sits moping and pondering on the folly of her kind. The End of the Owl and the Birds. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. Aesop's Fables The Ass in the Lion's Skin. The Ass in the Lion's Skin An ass found a lion's skin, and dressed himself up in it. Then he went about frightening every one he met, for they all took him to be a lion, men and beasts alike, and took to their heels when they saw him coming. Elated by the success of his trick, he loudly brayed in triumph. The fox heard him and recognized him at once for the ass he was, and said to him, Ho, ho, my friend, it's you, is it? I, too, should have been afraid if I hadn't heard your voice. Aesop's Fables, The Ass in the Lion's Skin 
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The She Goats and Their Beards. Jupiter granted beards to the she goats at their own request, much to the disgust of the he goats, who considered this to be an unwarrantable invasion of their rights and dignities. So they sent a deputation to him to protest against his action. He, however, advised them not to raise any objections. What's in a tuft of hair? said he. Let them have it if they want it. They can never be a match for you in strength. The end of The She-Goats and Their Beards Read by Abraham This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Old Lion a lion, enfeebled by age, and no longer able to procure food for himself by force, determined to do so by cunning. Betaking himself to a cave, he lay down inside and feigned to be sick. And whenever any of the other animals entered to inquire after his health, he sprang upon them and devoured them. Many lost their lives in this way, till one day a fox called at the cave, and having a suspicion of the truth, addressed the lion from outside instead of going in and asked him how he did. He replied that he was in a very bad way. But, said he, why do you stand outside? Pray come in. I should have done so, answered the fox, if I hadn't noticed that all the footprints point towards the cave, and none the other way. End of The Old Lion This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Boy Bathing Recorded by Duncan, also known as Nerdvana A boy was bathing in a river and got out of his depth, and was in great danger of being drowned. A man who was passing along a road heard his cries for help, and went to the riverside, and began to scold him for being so careless as to get into deep water, but made no attempt to help him. "'Oh, sir!' cried the boy. "'Please help me first, and scold me afterwards.' "'Give assistance, not advice, in a crisis.'" End of The Boy Bathing This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Quack Frog Once upon a time, a frog came forth from his home in the marshes, and proclaimed to all the world that he was a learned physician, skilled in drugs and able to cure all diseases. Among the crowd was a fox, who called out, You, a doctor? Why, how can you set up to heal others when you cannot even cure your own lame legs and blotched and wrinkled skin? Physician, heal thyself. End of the Quack Frog This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fable, The Swollen Fox Read by Patrick McNeil, Bakersfield, California A hungry fox found in a hollow tree a quantity of bread and meat, which some shepherds had placed there against their return. Delighted with his find, he slipped in through the narrow aperture and greedily devoured it all. But when he tried to get out again, he found himself so swollen after his big meal that he could not squeeze through the hole, and fell to whining and groaning over his misfortune. Another fox, happening to pass that way, came and asked him what the matter was, and on learning the state of the case, said, 
Well, my friend, I see nothing for it but for you to stay where you are till you shrink to your former size. You'll get out then easily enough. End of fable. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Andrew Sorsini. Aesop's Fables The Mouse, the Frog, and the Hawk A mouse and a frog struck up a friendship. They were not well mated, for the mouse lived entirely on land, while the frog was equally at home on land or in the water. In order that they might never be separated, the frog tied himself and the mouse together by the leg with a piece of thread. As long as they kept on dry land, all went fairly well. But coming to the edge of a pool, the frog jumped in, taking the mouse with him, and began swimming about and croaking with pleasure. The unhappy mouse, however, was soon drowned and floated about on the surface in the wake of the frog. There he was spied by a hawk who pounced down on him and seized him in his talons. The frog was unable to loose the knot which bound him to the mouse, and thus was carried off along with him and eaten by the hawk. End of The Mouse, the Frog, and the Hawk This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Andrew Sorsini. Aesop's Fables The Boy and the Nettles A boy was gathering berries from a hedge when his hand was stung by a nettle. Smarting with the pain, he ran to tell his mother and said to her between his sobs, I only touched it ever so lightly, mother. That's just why you got stung, my son, she said. If you had grasped it firmly, it wouldn't have hurt you in the least. End of The Boy and the Nettles This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Thanona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Peasant and the Apple Tree A peasant had an apple tree growing in his garden, which bore no fruit but merely served to provide a shelter from the heat for the sparrows and grasshoppers which sat and chirped in its branches. Disappointed at its barrenness, he determined to cut it down, and went and fetched his axe for the purpose. But when the sparrows and the grasshoppers saw what he was about to do, they begged him to spare it, and said to him, If you destroy the apple tree, we shall have to seek shelter elsewhere, and you will no longer have our merry chirping to enliven your work in the garden. He, however, refused to listen to them, and set to work with a will to cut through the trunk. A few strokes showed that it was hollow inside, and contained a swarm of bees and a large store of honey. Delighted with his find, he threw down his axe, saying, The old tree is worth keeping after all. Utility is most men's test of worth. End of The Peasant and the Apple Tree This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Jackdaw and the Pigeons A jackdaw, watching some pigeons in a farmyard, was filled with envy when he saw how well they were fed, and determined to disguise himself as one of them in order to secure a share of the good things they enjoyed. So he painted himself white from head to foot and joined the flock. And so long as he was silent, they never suspected that he was not a pigeon like themselves. But one day he was unwise enough to start chattering, when they at once saw through his disguise and pecked him so unmercifully that he was glad to escape and join his own kind again. But the other jackdaws did not recognize him in his white dress, and would not let him feed with them, but drove him away. And so he became a homeless wanderer for his pains. End of The Jackdaw and the Pigeons This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit 
LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fable, Jupiter and the Tortoise, read by Patrick McNeil, Bakersfield, California. Jupiter was about to marry a wife, and determined to celebrate the event by inviting all the animals to a banquet. They all came except the tortoise, who did not put in an appearance, much to Jupiter's surprise. So when he next saw the tortoise, he asked him why he had not been at the banquet. "'I don't care for going out,' said the tortoise. "'There's no place like home.' Jupiter was so much annoyed by this reply, that he decreed that from that time forth the tortoise should carry his house upon his back and never be able to get away from home, even if he wished to. End of Fable This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Kara Schallenberg, www.kray.org. Aesop's Fables The Dog in the Manger A dog was lying in a manger on the hay, which had been put there for the cattle, and when they came and tried to eat, he growled and snapped at them, and wouldn't let them get at their food. "'What a selfish beast!' said one of them to his companions. "'He can't eat himself, and yet he won't let those eat who can.' End of The Dog in the Manger Recorded on February 4th, 2006, in Oceanside, California. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Vicki Barber, St. John's, Newfoundland. Aesop's Fables The Two Bags Every man carries two bags about with him, one in front and one behind, and both are packed full of faults. The bag in front contains his neighbor's faults, the one behind his own. Hence it is that men do not see their own faults, but never fail to see those of others. The End of the Two Bags This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Venona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Oxen and the Axle Trees A pair of oxen were drawing a heavily loaded wagon along the highway, and as they tugged and strained at the yoke, the axle-trees creaked and groaned terribly. This was too much for the oxen, who turned round indignantly and said, "'Hello! You there! Why do you make such a noise when we do all the work?' They complain most, who suffer least. End of the Oxen and the Axle-trees This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Christine Dewar, Venona Sassa, Florida. Aesop's Fables The Boy and the Filberts A boy put his hand into a jar of filberts, and grasped as many as his fist could possibly hold. But when he tried to pull it out again, he found he couldn't do so for the neck of the jar was too small to allow the passage of so large a handful. Unwilling to lose his nuts, but unable to withdraw his hand, he burst into tears. A bystander, who saw where the trouble lay, said to him, "'Come, my boy, don't be so greedy. Be content with half the amount, and you'll be able to get your hand out without difficulty. Do not attempt too much at once.' End of The Boy and the Filberts